Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. I was just texting my mom. I'm Derek Shore. <laughs> And I wasn't. I'm Courtney Savala. <laughs> There's a lot it of stuff going on. It takes my mom like a week to figure out when I when she has a text message. It's funny. My mom will leave her phone at home, and then we won't be able to find her all day, and she's off doing her thing. And then we're mad at her because we've you know sent the cops to find her. And yeah, it's I've done that fine. before too. The well check at home, <laughs> and she's at home. She won't answer the door. Yeah. You've sent the cops to I check have. on your mom. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes, when she won't answer. I mean, uh, what else are we going to do? See, parents, you stress us out. Hello? It's almost like parenting a child, right? As your parents get older, you're concerned about their safety. And mom, I hope you're safe and out there watching. <laughs> and Courtney's mom, Eileen, I hope you are as well. She is. She's in San Fran still having fun with her sisters. Oh, She's how having fun. a good time. Well, happy Flag Day, yes. by the way, June 14th. And I'm so glad that our little man Tex Isn't that cute? this. He is such a cutie. My mom does always remind me when it is Flag Day. And back in 1777, Flag Day is when uh, Congress officially adopted the U.S. flag. It's fantastic. Kind of a big deal. I love seeing that. And, you know, very close, obviously, we just had D-Day and Memorial Day, Fourth of July. I love seeing all of sort of the red, white, and blue around. In our neighborhood, they hang the flags um, on uh, every street. That so is so really cool. cool. And I know the neighborhood where I grew up in Salt Lake City, my mom's neighborhood, they would line the streets with flags. Yeah. Like flags on PVC. Uh -huh. They do rebar and PVC. Right, right, right. And it's so beautiful to see all that. So neat. Well, happy Flag Day. And happy also day. happy last day of being without children. Without kids. Because Courtney's kids have been at camp all week. So you and Orlando, you've been doing date night. Every night. All week long. All week long. So last night was date night number four. And I have to tell you, from start to finish, it was fantastic. We went over to Emmeline oh, on West Dallas. One and of it my was, favorite restaurants. You know, they just launched a brand new menu, and um, Orlando had never been there before, which I don't know how that happened. Oh, really? like, when were you there? But um, I went with a few girlfriends, Anna Mae, one of my really good friends, yeah. a long time ago. But um, from start to finish, that meal was absolutely incredible. And their new summer menu, y'all, just make a reservation and get out there. It's anytime someone asks me for a restaurant recommendation. I always say that. I always say Emmeline. Yeah. And anytime we have visitors from out of town, we take it, you know, we take them there. Sam is so great. Brandon Sam is behind wonderful. the bar is so great. Toby was our server and he said he only follows two things on Instagram. And thanks to Jerry Martin, our general manager, the one of the two is, is Tex. Tex? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's an interesting story. I didn't get a chance to see Jerry today to, to talk, chat with him about that story, but apparently there was no tip unless he was going to follow Tex. Oh, dear. Yeah. I can, I can totally he imagine He still follows Tex. He showed me last night. And big fans of the show. Toby was an amazing server, um, and it, it was so decadent. What I love about Emmeline is everything from, you know, you can get caviar to pizza to pasta. To tell you this caviar appetizer that we had, off the chain. It was a little caviar with creme fraiche, a little vodka to sip on the side. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, I Very looked at nice. your Instagram, pick after pick after pick. You uh, had a fun night, too. You went over to Candytopia? We did. We had a little date night as well because Brandon and I are always running around like crazy. And even if we're together at an event, it's still like a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And our friend Shannon was in town, you know, from Chicago. You saw her on the show yesterday. She missed her flight the night before, so she got out last night. And we ran over to Candytopia. And I wasn't quite was sure. so cute. Well, after seeing Lauren Kelly's live show, during Houston Life yesterday, I thought, okay, we've got to check this out. We had so much fun. That marshmallow pit is something else. And I'm telling you, it's like a workout, too, swimming through Look all of you. those marshmallows. Just... Just waiting for my confetti. I mean, I felt like Beyonce a little bit. I mean, you look like her. You look <laughs> amazing. Moment. Do you think the boys would love it? They would love it. Okay. And it's not just about the great Gosh, photo opportunities. That. There's just a fun feeling. Yeah, all of these sculptures and even the two-dimensional artwork yeah. on the wall, it takes them like hundreds of hours to create. That's Jackie Sorkin right there. You saw her on Houston Life yesterday, but she has such a great story about wanting to develop something like this. Everyone told her she was totally nuts. Sweet dreams. I was exhausted there in those marshmallows. <laughs> Had to take a little nap. But Jackie was so great, and I'm so happy to see anytime we have a young entrepreneur on the show, yes. or an entrepreneur of any age, I shouldn't just say young, but Jackie's a mom and she's d doing the family thing, but she also pursued her passion. Candytopia's in Houston, Dallas, Atlanta now. They're taking the world by storm. And we just left there with such 
an uplifted, good feeling. Right. It's such an unusual thing to do. You guys have to go check it out. And it's there's something to be said to kind of channeling your inner child, right? Like playing and you're getting shot with confetti or you're swimming in those marshmallows. There's something to be said for just being happy. Completely. Right? And they have giant bins of candy all over the place too. Oh, see, I would just eat my way through there. That's my problem. What's your favorite candy? Do you have a favorite candy? Oh, I like watermelon flavored stuff or banana flavored stuff. I know it's all, you know, not real watermelon flavor. Right. But I don't know. I, I'm Chewy also a chocolate sprees, person. Man. Me too. Chewy, Chewy sprees. sprees. Oh, that Bucky's, is good. They have the best Chewy Sprees. And Bucky's also has those Swedish fish, too. So good. And Sour Patch Kids. And Twizzlers. Love them. Twizzlers. It's so great living in the South. I mean, we say this all the time on Houston Life. One of the reasons why I love doing the show is we get to meet all kinds of movers and shakers and interesting people and just all the time. regular folks making a difference in their communities. And there is so much to do in this city. Get out, push do yourself it. to try something new. And last night at Candytopia, it was just a great reminder of how lucky we are to live in Houston. And by the way, that is a ticketed event, right? You have to buy a ticket to get in or pay admission? Or buy what? tickets in advance. Yeah, I think okay. there's a small admissions fee. Yeah, but um, over at Marquee Center, I-10 and Silver. Marquee Center, and you can't miss it. I mean, you'll see the Candytopia storefront. It's a really big space, but uh, they're, they're going to be here for a while. The calendar, I mean, I think months... Months and months. Okay. I, I don't think it's like get a out there and do few it. Few day thing. Yeah, get but out yeah, of the go heat. And do it. You should take Orlando and the boys. I would love to. They we'll probably do it next week for sure. So you've lived in the South now for 17 years. Is that right? Oh my gosh. Uh, let me think about this. 2003. Is okay. that right? January 2003. Okay, so just over the 16-year yeah. mark. And don't you feel like there's sort of a special vernacular or vocabulary that you start developing when you live in the South? Absolutely. Or just my ways first, of living. My first sort of so Southern word, and I never thought I would say it, and I probably said it seven times already. Was y'all. Y'all, yeah. When I first or moved all here. all y'all? Have you done the plural? I have done all y'all. Yeah, that's all good. All y'all. When I first moved here the first month, I started saying y'all so much that I had to make a conscious effort. To not? To not say it. Because I was really saying it a lot. You just felt like you were trying to say it. It's just, it shortens everything up. It does. It does. Yeah. It's, it's very handy, but I was overusing it, so I had to stop. <laughs> but it's not just about the things that we say. It's also the way we behave and the things we do. There is this really funny website. It's called It's a Southern Thing. And so <laughs> on this website, they were sort of explaining the 17 things that really bug Southerners. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, have you heard about this? No, I haven't, I'm gonna look at my card. Okay, the first one is instant iced tea. I can, th that definitely bugs. I'm not really a, an iced tea person. I mean, there's probably once a year that I'll drink it, but instant iced tea is not, it's not real. What's up? It's what's... like white chocolate, it's not real. Oh, well, that's offensive. <laughs> You're gonna get hate mail. I love white chocolate. It's not, not, not really real chocolate, chocolate. But still delicious. Then call it white something else. It's not chocolate. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know you had such strong feelings about this. By the way, can we talk about our costumes today? Because, like, we didn't plan this. These aren't costumes. No, I know, but, you know, you know I call it that sometimes. I just call it clothing. I know. I, you know I call it that. Come on, it's a joke. Don't email me and tell me. Every morning before work, you're like, Orlando, what costume are you wearing to the office today? I know. I got I, I got some hate mail the last time I pronounced something wrong. What? Um, about the, my first car, remember? The people were very mad at me. But it was a joke between friends. That's what we would say. Oh, when you called the Hyundai the Hyundai. Hyundai. Yeah, yeah. Hyundai. You, yeah. You were, you were just sort of being over the top. Over the top, and yeah. that's all that was. Or the buffet, then I call this a cot. Like, it's just, it's a thing. I'm, I really... Isn't it funny that in the time it takes someone to actually angrily go to their computer, yeah. find your profile, pound out some note about the Hyundai... And press send. Guys, you could be out making someone smile. You or, could be jumping in marshmallows at Candytopia. You could be throwing confetti all over your neighbor. Huh. Okay, listen, let's you go back. <laughs> I mean, and what a shock. I just would love that our be? outfits, by the way. Our costumes. Just, our costumes. Okay, the other 17 things that bug Southerners. We talked about instant iced tea. When people say our accents are cute. Oh, your accent's so cute. No, cute. When people uh, are rude.
That's never happened to me. Never. How about saying shut up rather than hush? Hush is so sophisticated, don't it you think? It is. I wish I could. Like, I do shut up like that. Like, oh my gosh. I know, that's what I wanted to do. But we don't say shut up in our house. Like, that's, it's just not nice. Oh, I would right? never say that. But I would do, I would say out of exasperation. Right, like. Shut up. Or like, OMG. Shut the front door. Right. That's a good one. Are you a grits eater? Of course. I, plain grits are like, don't even serve it. Why would you eat plain grits? They've got to have butter and cheese and yeah. all kinds of stuff in them. People who don't say please and thank you, oh yeah. Annoying. That is annoying. Um, people who talk on their phone rather than the cashier at the checkout. Can I just, can we talk about the phone situation for a minute? Yes. How about this, walking through the store with people on FaceTime? Or speaker and phone. You know, well, I'm just, I'm just, uh, did we talk about this on the show? Because I'm having like a flashback. We, yes. When we talked about it? Speaker phone okay. is a pet peeve for, I just, for both of us. I get right up in that conversation. I do. Because so. I'm like, girl, listen, I wouldn't stand for that either. I wouldn't. I'd break up with them. And they look at me like I'm weird, but I say, well, I heard your entire conversation. You do For not. the last 15 minutes. You do? Or how about somebody on the speakerphone in the toilet when you go into a public bathroom and you can hear them in the stall? I just flush the toilet over and over again. <laughs> you really? <laughs> Crank up the music really oh loudly on your gosh. phone. So remember last week, last weekend was Best Friends Day, right? BFF yes. Day and my BFF, Louis, in LA. So we have another friend, Terry, and Terry's French and has a very thick French accent. So Louis was telling us just like a week ago about how he handles people who are talking loudly on their phone or FaceTiming in public, and Terry goes up to them, and he taps them and, and says, oh, and excuse me. Oh, uh, oh gosh, that was that not, a, that French was not a French accent. But that's okay, I'm that's not okay. try doing it, so embarrassing. So he goes up and says, excuse me, we are not interested in hearing your conversation. <laughs> yeah. In a beautiful French accent, which actually doesn't even sound rude when they say it. You it know, doesn't it sound rude. Pretty. And they did it out at this little coffee shop recently, and the woman was so horrified, and she ran out back and took the call. And one more quick phone story. So Brandon and I, a couple weeks ago, we were at a spa, just like a day spa, right, where you go and you relax you and you this? steam and so go yeah. on vacation. Oh, okay. we, we do it all the time. There's a lot you don't know about me. So we're at the spa, right? And as you enter the wet area where there are jacuzzis and showers. Was I just insulted? <laughs> no. Kidding. Not at all. So there is a sign on the door that says when you go into the spa, no phones. Duh. No food, no booze. I mean, there are things that you just don't take into the right. spa. Your phone being one of them. And also, not only is it disturbing if you're on a phone in a, in a spa, but at a spa, people are... That's the whole point of disconnecting. Well, you also are, like, naked or wearing a towel, right? You're in a, you're in a spa. You're not wearing anything. Well, you're in a robe. Okay. Not at right, all spas. No, like, you may be naked in a jacuzzi, it, right? You're like so you're if someone has their phone space. up and they're FaceTiming, yeah. what if they're, like, secretly... Taking Video photos taking of people, yeah. like not an appropriate place, mm -hmm. or like a locker room. Leave the phones out. I've seen yeah. this all the time at the gym. So there is this guy in the jacuzzi, on speakerphone, in, in the jacuzzi, jacuzzi, talking like the same thing. Yeah, business this, business that. Close the deal, make the money. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, are you Beyonce or what? So. So I get a spa attendant and I say, could you please go and, you know, could you get this guy to get off, the, get off the phone? So he walks up to the guy, whispers something in the ear, and the guy's like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so bro, business this, business that, takes it off speaker. And, and puts, then is, no. And so the spa attendant goes back and says, no, you can't be on a phone call. So he's like, okay, yeah, yeah. So then he's just texting. And the spa attendant for a third time was like, dude, no Can phones. You leave? Take the phone out. Yeah. And the guy looked at him like he, he had a third eye. He had a third eye. Like, how, how could you possibly stop me from being on the phone? Mm. Horrible, right? Yeah, horrible. I'm so glad we live in the South with manners. Always. Most of us, anyway. So another thing, there are, there are insults that we lob at each other in the South that are maybe a little more subtle. And I figured that today, maybe we could, we could try it. We don't know what's on our cards. You know what I do love about the South? All, what I love now is like Mr. Derek or Miss Courtney. You know, you can, that's how the kids address adults. Yeah. And I love that. We've carried that tradition. Okay, let's see. You know it's an insult 
in the South if it ends with bless your heart or Lord love them. Oh, Lord I use love it all them. the time. Bless, bless your, your heart. heart. Sometimes you use both. Bless your heart, Lord love them. Or I'm going to... I'm going to say this now and pray about it later. Bless their heart, but then you go on with the insult. It just happens. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, it's just like it's like Phil Archer says. It just X's that right out. It's very effective. Yeah, I'll have to try that. Oh, oh Ooh. dear, this is that's something good. that I guess people say in the South that's rude, but not meant to sound nice. So is that the look you were going for? Oh. oh. Do people say that? People say it. Oh, that's not yeah. subtle. That's but just, just remember, keep that in a pocket. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you never know when that person on the cell phone or, you know, when someone's kind of, it's a good, mm, it's a good one. This one's good too, because I did peek at this on accident. Okay. I just love how you don't care what people think. I just love how you don't care what people think. Oh, okay. That's a good one, right? That is a that good Because that gives one. people a thinker of like, huh? That's a nompliment. <laughs> right? That's a nompliment. Right. That's like when people see you at the grocery store and they say, oh, wow, you are so much better looking in person. Uh-huh. It's like, thanks, I'm a dog on TV. That's right. Woof, woof. Yeah. All right. I hope you kept the receipt for that. Oh! People don't actually say People that. People say that. I think they say it not just only in the South. That's got, someone says that somewhere, just not nice Southern people. Okay. <gasps> this one's really bad. What is it? <laughs> Could you imagine saying this to someone? Oh, you got your hair done? What do they call that color? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it, I'm just reading. Staff I wouldn't say that. Booing to at you? Wow. No. They wrote the cards, by the way. They wrote them. Okay, if someone says to you, well, that's nice if you like that sort of thing. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> that was sort of mixed reaction from the staff. Oh, man. It just sounds better sometimes with an accent. You know, I, honestly, I didn't know I had an accent until I moved away from Chicago. I never heard it because I heard it my whole life. Your Chicago accent? Yeah. Oh. And... I still don't, I, I hear it in my mom and dad, and there are certain words that I say that I can sometimes hear my mom, you know? But um, I, I didn't realize I had an accent until I was in Midland and someone said, where are you from? You're not from around here. I could tell by your accent. And I thought, my, my accent <laughs> in West Texas, right? And I thought, isn't that cute? I don't have an accent, but you do. You know, it was like this banter. Because nobody back ever and thinks forth. they have an accent. At but all. We all have accents. I mean, Chicago with the flat A and the nays. I'm going to go to the garage and get the pizza. Hot your car. No, that's yard. Boston. Oh. Yeah. I, I never claim to be great at accents. Well, living in the South, uh, we encounter all kinds of people as well because it's so diverse. It is. Something that I love doing is heading over to the lake, like going to Lake Travis in Austin Super or fun. headed up to Lake Conroe. So if you don't have a boat and if you don't have friends... With boats? With boats, because that's even better than having your own. W we don't have a boat. I would love to have a boat. Maybe though. you Wouldn't should that be get great? one. Okay, so there is this really great inflatable speedboat, guys. It's you not... How fast? Well, I don't Inflatable? Think, yeah, I don't think there's a, a motor on it. Do we have the web computer so we can show people? Check it out. Okay, Is, yeah. Can you imagine rolling up to Lake Travis, <laughs> <laughs> just blowing this up? Hey, anybody want to go on the boat this weekend? And then you're like... <sighs> yeah, you might have to use your feet to, <laughs> you know, paddle that oh, thing. Oh, my word. But How much is that? Dude, it's like 219 bucks. I looked it up on Amazon. Oh, it I need It says it can hold six people. And get this, it has built-in coolers. It so you, better. Yeah, so you could dump in that ice and store a cold drink. Oh, that's hilarious. That would be baller. So can you imagine rolling up to the lake? Everyone else has yeah. their boats. And you spend, like, three hours blowing yours up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you finally get in. I want to do it just for the hidden camera factor. I think we should. I think we should. Why don't we? You want to go have these on it? Let's do it. Let's order okay. it now. Get on your Amazon account. Prime two-day shipping. Okay, so today we're going to have so much fun on the show. Thank you again for joining us here. We always have a, a good show on Fridays all throughout the week, but Fridays are especially fun. And today we have something really cool. It's the story behind the dad and son duo running Boss Cat Kitchen and Libations. We love this place. Uh, you had Orlando's birthday at this place. We did. 
Um, plus, they are having a Father's Day special, of course, ahead of this weekend's celebrations. There you go, John and his dad. We're going to learn more about how they got into the restaurant business. Very cool story. Also, coming up next, three easy summer cocktail recipes that are low in sugar and big on flavor. This could be a regular cocktail or a mocktail. The bottom line is it's low sugar. All right. We'll be right back, folks. Don't go away. Welcome back. The summer heat is on, and if you're in the mood for a refreshing cocktail, today we have three recipes you can make at home while keeping the sugar content in check. Registered dietitian with Milk and Honey Nutrition, Mary Ellen Phipps, is here to show us how it's done. Courtney has the best seat in the house. Yes. And Mary Ellen, to remind our viewers your story, you were diagnosed with diabetes, and that is why you changed the entire way you eat. Right. So I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was five years old, so I've never really had much of an option. And once you get to drinking age, it gets a little boring being told to always stick with beer and wine because that's a safe bet. So these are all lower sugar options. Great for anybody because nobody needs 60 grams of sugar in a beverage, um, but especially for people with diabetes to enjoy the summer. Okay, fantastic. So we're mixing up a uh, margarita to start. Right, so this is what I like to call a juicy orange margarita. Yum. So we're gonna start with some 100% orange juice and we're gonna use our little makeshift shakers here. So uh, go ahead and pour that in. That's a great idea. So if you don't have a shaker at home, just use a mason jar. Yeah, we don't need to get fancy with anything. And so we can go ahead and take two lime wedges we're okay. gonna squeeze that in. Okay. And you can squeeze these either by hand or with a little uh, lime squeezer if you have yes, one. Yes, yes, yes. And then that is a little bit. If, right now, if you wanted to keep it a mocktail, we could just uh, leave it at this. And but then we're gonna add in tequila and a little bit of orange liqueur. Oh, okay. There you go. And I mean, and the mocktail option is great if you're not drinking, but since Courtney is today. Well, and I love the presentation of this, and I will tell you, I did have a few sips. Very good. Sometimes margaritas can be a little tart or heavy alcohol, right? This is perfectly right. balanced. I really like it. Right, and so one thing I like about making your own cocktails is you can make them as strong or not strong as you like, um, so. Enjoy. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Look very, at these very cute nice. straws on here, too. Yes, and so we're pulling on that natural sweetness from the orange juice, which kind of sets off. There's no need for syrup or anything like that. That is a good balance. Not too sweet, not too sour, not too strong. It's perfect. Nicely done. Okay, and opinion. You put on, is it tahine on here? Yes. Okay, yes. I love that, too. Adds a little spice. Mm -hmm. All right, the pina colada, another so, classic. Sparkling pina colada is one of my favorites, and so. With pina colada, you're usually gonna run about 60 grams of sugar for the average pina colada, and it comes from our cream of coconut, and but that's what gives it that classic pina colada. 60 grams of sugar, so that's like lot. more than a can of soda. Yes, and it, but that's what gives it that classic flavor. So with this recipe, we've used a little bit, we've backed off a little bit, so if you would just wanna do a teeny tiny little squeeze in there. And this is, okay, cream of coconut? It's just cream of coconut. It's How like much? what's your typical, do a little bit more. A little more, there, okay. that's good. Where do you get this? Um, it's gonna be by the beer and wine in any grocery store. Oh, I've never um, seen it, okay. So that's the liquor. Yeah, no, uh, no, that's just the flavoring. Oh, okay. Um, but usually in a standard pina colada, you're gonna have probably three, four times that amount. Oh man, it smells so good. Um, and then too. we've got pineapple juice. Okay. This is good. <laughs> this is really good. Um, you know it's good when her voice this drops is, three uh, octaves. Coconut rum. <laughs> like a monster. <laughs> this is good. You Listen, can make it a, a, sing, right here. a single or a double, depending on what mood you're in. Oh, well, let's do a double. Okay. Um, and then we're going to shake this up real good because we need to get that. Um, How's your pina colada sound? Oh, let's, let me tell you something. <laughs> this is good. This is good. <laughs> and then we just take Where's my inflatable off? boat? Oh, exactly. <laughs> Pour it. Sounds so good. And then it's if you delicious. want to top it off, the key with this one that makes it so refreshing is the um, unsweetened oh. sparkling coconut uh, beverage. So like you can use LaCroix, a lot of store brands have their own version. Coconut uh, LaCroix. Yeah. Sure. You sound like a Post Malone Post song. Malone. And we can't forget the umbrella. The little umbrella which yeah. makes it so festive. Mm-hmm. This is good. <laughs> it's really, really good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, no, this is really, really good. It's very refreshing. The Fruit Punch Sparkler is our last cocktail on the list. Yes, so this basically just pulls on all that natural mm. sweetness in 100% fruit juices. So we've got, I'll let you do this here, we've got apple juice, orange juice, and cranberry juice. Okay. Um, that and all... To someone at home is probably wondering, I mean, with all of this juice, how are we staying low on sugar, though? Well, so when you think about the average mixed drink, it always has a syrup mixed in. Yeah. And so with these, we're only using one to two ounces of each of each. One of to two juices. ounces, and it's natural fruit right. juice. Right. And so, and that's the vodka. If you the vodka. Throw that in, we can if you want to add that. 
Um, and then we can put this on, shake it up, and then we'll top, just like we did with the pina colada, we'll top this off with the sparkling water. An unsweetened sparkling water is kind of my key to refreshing summer drinks that aren't adding extra sugar. Nothing and like a little Topo Chico. Yes, and then you can top it off if so you want. So that's just a little floater, just a dash yes. to finish it off. And it makes a nice little pretty gradient. On I the love this. It's very good. It's you look tart. very nice over there enjoying I, your beverage. Listen, I'm having a great day. Ooh. Just need another hand. <laughs> Can you imagine if you had a third hand, how convenient that would be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mary Seriously Ellen, myself. that is delicious. And I love that you did this segment too, because for anyone who is diabetic or in your situation, you want to be able to live life. Right, and so alcohol can mess with your blood sugars if you're dealing with diabetes. And so when you pour on a bunch of sugar on top of that, you're just, it spells disaster. Yeah. So this is a great way to have a little fun still um, and get to have some creativity. Mary Ellen Phipps with Milk and Honey Nutrition. Cheers, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Courtney. Cheers, my friend. Great to see you. Good to see you. I'm just going to cheers cocktails. myself. <laughs> and in the meantime, by the way, if you would like to connect with Mary Ellen or for these complete recipes, you can visit the food section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. And still ahead, guys, Texas Pet of the Week, Flora needs your help finding a forever home. Aww. Oh, my word, she's so cute. Details on how you can adopt this adorable puppy. And up next, what gas and chemical companies are doing to ensure our communities stay safe. We will be right back. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome back. Here in Houston, there has been a growing concern over the health and safety in the gas and chemical industry. Here to explain what's being done to keep our community safe, President and CEO of HV Occupational Health and Safety, Marie Hetmanchek, Dave Venezuela. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I know we have a lot to get to. And right. this is a heavy subject, obviously. We've it had uh, in our own backyard several instances uh, recently. But let's talk about the industry as a whole. We talk about uh, chemical and uh, oil and gas. How do you go into these companies to make sure that the employees feel safe, the communities feel safe? I mean, I imagine this is a complete overhaul. Uh, it is. So, I mean, I don't want anyone to take the notion away that the, the industry is not safe. There's always opportunity for improvement, right? And we have made huge strides. Uh, unfortunately, you know, in the last couple of months, we've had uh, some incidents that have brought safety to the forefront. So HV Occupational Health and Safety, what we uh, are a premier provider of medical professionals and safety professionals and we also provide case management for the industry. Um, and so we go in and help uh, not just the big guys but the subcontractors out in ensuring that they can provide safety and quality personnel to ensure the safety of our community. And this industry is really part of the fabric of Houston, of course. It's right in our backyard. Absolutely. Uh, it employs so many Houstonians. And these companies also are committed to, A, operating safely, because that's in their own best interests as well, but they want to give back to the community as well. Absolutely, and they do. And I think that, you know, when, when a mishap happens, obviously the news is to report what happens, right. but we also need to report what, what good the co uh, community is doing out there, right? And so um, if you look at the industry as a whole, the safety record uh, since 2003, when I really became passionate about this, has uh, soared. And there's several different layers that have been put into place to help with that. Um, to me, March 23rd, 2003 will always be a day that I remember because of losing friends that I considered family, right? There was a, a an explosion that took place in Texas City. Uh, subcontractors were hurt, um, uh, killed, fatally killed. Um, and but the industry as a whole came together and rallied to make it safer, right? And which they did. And in addition to that, that they have continued to provide financial as well as educational. Um, endowments to the community as a whole. And it's not just for the safety industry, but we're talking about for kids. After Harvey, they came in and, and helped and provided resources, funds, manpower to help our community as a whole. So I think that, you know, the industry, there's always room for improvement, obviously, right? But the industry as a whole is doing 
very well in identifying the risks and helping to facilitate um, solutions for those risks. I think probably the biggest thing is communication. Absolutely. I mean, if there's a tragedy, God forbid. Right. Um, but the transparency needs to happen, the communication, the lines of communication. I would imagine this kind of round table with the community and the companies need to happen. Absolutely. And, and the other thing that we need to realize is that, you know, subcontractors don't have the deep dollars like uh, other facilities do, right? Uh, and I don't want to name the big guys on the block, but you know, the big ones that we're talking about in, in our backyard, right? The subcontractors don't have that kind of funds to sometimes put in these people in place that have all of the knowledge in order to create the safety net that we're talking about. So that's how HV actually came about. Um, HV is all about helping our clients by giving them value. And value to me is hiring the people that are leaders in the industry and being able to utilize them throughout the industry. So more people get advantage of, for instance, the, the VP of our company has more uh, certifications and credentials than anybody else in the United States from Texas A&M. Whoop! Um, so that is something that to me is wonderful because we're able to help more uh, people in the industry. Um, and so that's what, you know, our pledge, our passion is all about. So. All right. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We've got to oh. leave it there. But thank you so much for stopping by, and thanks for helping to keep our community safer. Absolutely. Thank nice you. Marie. For more information on HV Occupational Health and Safety, you can give them a call at 888-771-1172 or visit them online at occmedusa.com. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks, guys. Still ahead on Houston Life, Texas Pet of the Week, we will meet Flora in just a few minutes. And Monday on the show, three ways, there she is, three ways to make the mo most of your 4th of July party go off without a, with a bang, including how to make a festive ice bucket stand out of something unexpected. We'll be right back. This Pet of the Week is brought to you by the Houston SPCA. But before that, how about a successful adoption story? Well, when Caviyan, a miniature horse with a big personality, was rescued by the Houston SPCA, the equine staff knew they had a very special horse. Though small in stature, Capitan held his own among the other once neglected and abused equine despite his medical challenges. Capitan was healed with some veterinary care and proper training, and it wasn't long before he caught the eye of a family from Austin. He's beautiful. They have a mini cult with dwarfism named Harold, who really needed a companion, a BFF, if you will. <laughs> Capitan fits in perfectly on their ranch and has quickly become a sweet, constant companion for Harold. Oh my goodness. Look at them. They are so cute together. Love the ending to that story. Speaking of cuties, by the way, joining us today is Julie Kenstall, <laughs> along with cutie. a little cutie puppy cute. who needs a home. Flora. Yes, yes. Four-month-old Flora. She is a pretty big for a puppy, right? So she's got a little bit of long legs. She and like 20 other animals came in through a cruelty case. So she's going to need a little bit of training, but she's ready to go. She's ready to be adopted. She's got a very playful personality. She does have a little bit of a chill personality, too. So in the green room, she, was, she had taken over one of the chairs completely and had taken a little nap. But um, she yeah. is so precious. And I guess, I mean, hard to say what breed she is, but a little bit of a terrier. She's got kind of that beard. Like wiry. Thing, wiry wiry hair. fur. Yes, definitely a terrier. And I see a little bit of golden retriever, too, with the long legs. Yes. She hasn't grown into. So I'm thinking like medium to large dog. But a nice active but, dog as well. Yes. If you've got a family who likes to be outdoors, maybe at the end of the day come in and chill out a little bit. She'll also chill out with you, too. But um, yeah, I think all around, just a really good, good she family is pet. Precious. She She's not going to be around very long. And like all of your adoptable animals, they are ready to go. They are. They come with the adoption package. Sometimes people do ask us why we, we do adoption fees. You're actually paying it for when they come through our ambulance or through animal cruelty. They are medically challenged, and, and that's very expensive because we are 100% donations. We don't receive any funds, just donations and grants. And so, you know, summertime is a great time to think about adoption with everybody home. So, you know, everybody can kind of get their chore list and figure out who's going to do the feeding, who's going to make sure the water bowl is full of water, oh, and also making sure you have your... Um, pet preparedness plan as well. So it's a Absolutely. Good Very important yes. during hurricane season. Well, and also if you're thinking about adopting a new member of your family, get on out to the Houston SPCA because your brand new campus really is one of the best in the country. 
Thank you. We are very blessed. That is uh, 12 years in the making in a capital campaign. Like I said, complete donations, but it's a campus for all animals. Um, we have a rescue barn. We have an equine center. And you can actually come, even if you've been thinking about adoption, to come and stroll through the hallways. We have get acquainted spaces. Come with the kids, even if you're not ready for adoption. It's something that you can actually spend some time, maybe an hour, hour and a half. We have habitat windows that you can look through and see our wildlife. We have education birds. There's a lot to see and do there, you know, in the summertime. Something so for come everyone. Come on the visit. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> Julie, great to see you. Little Flora, good luck finding a new home. She's busy munching on uh, your paws over there. <laughs> for more info about pet adoptions, you can check out the Houston SPCA website houstonspca.org thanks so much good luck flora she's not going to be there very long still to come a feel-good story just in time for father's day this dad and son duo really dominating the houston restaurant scene and coming up next how you can receive free dynamo tickets and swag by switching energy providers we'll have all the info after the break Welcome back. As the temperatures are rising this summer, unfortunately, so do our energy bills. It happens. Here with tips on how to save when shopping for a new energy plan. John Smith with Tri Eagle Energy. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's good to be back. I feel like we just need to sit here and listen. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't how it was scripted. I know, right? <laughs> but walk us through this because it's true. I mean, our AC is running 24-7. We're not, I mean, I know it's not, it can be definitely hotter, but this is the time when we really see our bills shoot up. It is. It is. It's Southeast Texas. It's Houston. It's humid. Humid, it's hot here, right? And so this is the time of year that Houstonians, we tend to do two, one of two different things, right? We either just, we're used to it, and we know it's hot, the bills are going up, or we actually go out and start shopping and trying to find a provider to save us some money. Which can really make our eyes cross. It can, and it's great that we have that choice, but also when you're going online to compare, people can get a little confused about kilowatt hours and the price and all of that. So today you're here to sort of walk us through step by step. That's right, right? that's right. It's kilowatt hours, I don't even know what that is, right? So who can tell us what a kilowatt hour is? The reality is when you get into the shopping sites and the comparison sites, you got to start paying attention to the details. And I think we've actually got a couple slides that we were going to show as well. Yeah, let's put up that first example and then you can sort of walk us through it. So typically when people go online and they're looking at kilowatt hour, it may say something like seven cents or eight cents or nine cents. As soon as this uh, graphic comes up, they're working on it in the control room. Yeah. You sort of explain what we're looking at here. Yeah, so when you go to a comparison site, um, you will see different providers and different rates, right? And People tend to always go to the cheapest rate, especially if they're looking to save some money. Um, what the catch is, is here we go. I think that we can see it now. Uh, when you see there's three different companies here on a comparison site showing different rates. If you're looking at this, for example, you would think which one would be the one that you would I want mean, to sign up I mean, company X, right? Because it's the lowest amount. That's right. But the reality is, if you actually get into the details and we look at the electricity fact label, also known as the EFL, always in the fine print, right? If you go into those EFLs, you'll find all these hidden charges and usage fees, things that aren't going to be right here on the front page of the usage site or so, the comparison site. Out of those three then, the 7.5 cent per kilowatt yep. hour, that was not the cheapest? No, because if you look here, you'll see that depending on your usage, whether I'm using 500 kilowatt hours a month or a 2,000, you can pay a very different rate than that oh. 7.5. And here's where it gets gimmicky. So a lot of these different providers will charge you if you use less than a certain amount or more than a certain amount, or they'll credit you back. So that allows them to, pro to put that crazy aggressive rate up there and get your attention with it. But, but why? I mean, it seems like that is specifically designed to trick consumers. Yeah, exactly right. That's exactly right. It happens a lot in our industry, and that's why so many folks are scared of actually shopping. And so Triangle Energy has always tried to make sure that, listen, we've got one rate and a usage fee. Is There's no gimmicks. There's nothing hidden. We're You're very transparent. You're not trying to trick people. That's right. That that's seems exactly fair. Right. I'm annoyed already, by the I way. I know. Totally bothered. Okay, so I feel like when we're going through this, too, we need a current bill or a bill from the past, right? That's what you need to do because you need, if you're going to go shopping, and by the way, this is a sample of, believe it or not, Company T stands for Triangle. Um, but we only have two lines under the rates there. Every provider has to show a 500,000 and 2,000 kilowatt hour sample. That's the average rate. Okay. So take a couple old bills, understand what your actual usage is, and then go compare the sites and, and, and look at the shoppers, look at that EFL, and then you know. Do, am I looking at 2,000? Am I looking at 500? Because then, then you know what your average is, what you're spending in Ju June and July. Yep, that's exactly but right. But also when you're taking those old bills, shouldn't you also take one like summer and winter so you, you can really get a look at what your usage is like? Because yep. it varies during the year. Varies a lot. And it depends on 
Apartments don't use a lot. Old homes use a lot. Bigger new homes don't use as much as you'd think because they're so efficient, right? Yeah. Things have changed a lot and uh, being more efficient over the years. But in an old home with a pool, a big house, you're going to use a lot of energy. So you need to be looking at that 2,000 kilowatt hour sample. Okay. Let's talk about the power to win plan and how people enroll. Because this is something, I think we featured it on the show yes. a few months yeah. ago. And Lauren Kelly was down with the Dynamo yeah. riding the bikes. That's right. I was there with her. Yeah. That was, that was a little embarrassing how winded I got on that bike. But <laughs> <laughs> details, so, details. Right? So we are the, the official energy provider of the Houston Dynamo and Dash and also BBVA Stadium. And so we launched this new promo back before the season. Every time the Dynamo win a home game, we have a drawing and we pull out a new winner for a full year of electricity. We've had four winners so far. Whoa. So you can actually go on anytime and enroll in the Power to Win plan. And if you enroll in that, you're automatically entered into those drawings. But don't you also get Dynamo tickets and some swag? That's right. You get a couple Dynamo tickets, some t-shirts, some cool stuff Just like that. Just for enrolling. Just for enrolling. And you have a chance of winning free energy for an entire year. Yep. Okay. And for this promo today, we actually created a promo for Houston Life. Okay. And so anybody who's watching and wants to sign up today, if they're out there shopping, you get a nice little discount to our published rates right now. That's amazing. And again, as a consumer, it's great that we live in Texas and that we have the choice to choose our energy provider, but it is kind of annoying that some energy companies try to trick consumers yep. into paying more than they think they're paying. That's why so many people don't do it, but you can save a lot of money. Try Eagle, we try not to hide anything. And we also send a weekly usage report to our customers so they see their usage and they see their estimated bill. You don't get a surprise from us when you get your That's bill perfect. at the end of the month. No nasty surprises. John, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you, guys. A reminder, by the way, that special TriEagle Energy offer for Houston Life viewers is available by logging on to TriEagleEnergy.com. Use the promo code, super easy to remember, Houston Life for that discount. John, thanks again. That was fun. All right, thank you, guys. Great to see you. Coming up after the break, fatherly advice comes full circle. How a dad and son are serving up some success this Father's Day weekend. And if you aren't yet following Houston Life on Instagram, you can find our page to see all kinds of great content, including behind the scenes videos, a whole lot more fun. Just search Houston Life TV. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. When John Reed of Boss Cat Kitchen opened his rest Houston restaurant, he made a call to his dad, asking him to come out of retirement to work with him side by side. It's such a great story. And this Father's Day weekend, we're introducing you to John and his dad, Jack. I'm John Reed, owner of Boss Cat Kitchen. And I'm Jack Reed, his father. So when I opened up uh, Boss Cat, I offered an opportunity for him to come out and work with us and uh, be a manager and get active again. He was retired, he was getting a little lazy. So um, I thought he'd get back in the restaurant around, around you know, some young people. And, uh, you know, and it's always good to have a family member watching your back. Since we're retired, John's angle is that he's always trying to keep me young. <laughs> I think he's getting back at me for some. <laughs> you know, fries 14, what else you got? What you see now, all right, is not who he was 20 years ago, okay? He was always scowling, he was very serious. Uh, all the kids from our hometown were scared of him. I got a lot of headaches during those days. <laughs> I don't think you appreciate the times you have with your parents, probably, like, like you should until you get a little bit older, but now getting a chance to uh, to work by side by side with him, you know, uh, and seeing the impact he has on everybody else around us, all the servers and bartenders and managers, and he's their confidant, he's their mentor. Um, I reflect back to being a kid and just getting the opportunity to spend almost every day with my dad because he was my coach, he was one of my teachers, you know, at, at the school we went to school with, and big thing he taught me was was discipline. I think at the time I I probably. Uh, tried to rebuke that as much as possible. I was a little bit of a pain in the butt. But later in life, that discipline has afforded us the opportunity to grow to several restaurants now and be successful. This is a letter my father wrote to his uh, players in the 1980-81 season. One of his players had held on to this for 30-some years and sent it to my father after he had read this to his son and he wanted my father to have the, uh, the original copy. My dad knew the impact this would have on me, so he, he gave it to me as a birthday present a couple years ago, and I found the letter to be very impactful. It's not about wins and losses, it's about creating a better man. Makes you love Boss Cats even more. By the way, they will be offering a special Father's Day flight of four single barrel whiskeys for just 20 bucks. Oh, so awesome, I love that story. For more information, visit HoustonLife.tv. We'll be right back. 
Uh, coming up Monday on Houston Life, three ways you can make your 4th of July party go off without a hitch. We've got some really interesting DIYs, including how to transform an old walker into a festive ice bucket stand. Courtney. We're here for you. <laughs> And plus, we're going to have vintage photos in a flash inside Houston Tiny Type Studio. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. We'll Happy see you Happy Father's Day to all the dads.